Hello crafty friend, it's Justine. Today I have a beautiful project to show you and then three cards at the end using The Snow Garden by Susan Tierney Cockburn. Her stuff is always gorgeous. I love the dimension of her 3D realistic flowers and I just can't wait to show you what I've made and make the project with you here today. She has The Glory of Snow, which is a beautiful flower, Crocus and Ladybugs, again, beautiful flower, and the ladybug is just so cute and sweet. <laughs> then the Hemlock, Cones, and Chickadee, which is what all of my stuff is going to feature today. There's the American Holly, which is beautiful, and you can add a little bit of shine to the leaves to make it look even more realistic. And then she has these beautiful glimmered snow garden sentiments, which I use on my projects today. Then there's the winter bow, or bow, <laughs> bow, the winter bow, the winter bow, which is really pretty too. And then she has kind of a unique one, which is the ornamental cabbage and kale, which I find so interesting. Yes, it looks like cabbage. I'll pop a picture on the screen of the full collection. I have just really enjoyed kind of mixing and matching a little bit. I also use the winter bow. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. The winter bow um, glimmer plate on the background of my projects, which is just so beautiful. So let's just dive right into the project. Starting off with this bow, I am repurposing this bow. It was from a, oh, what was that from? Oh, an essential oil <laughs> box that I got at Christmas time. And I just did not have the heart to throw away the bow because it was so pretty. So we have that bow and then you can see here I have all of these evergreen tree branches. Love that. And I have this glimmered piece. Now, you guys, I'm making a Christmas decoration today. You might have recognized this frame. It is the same frame that I made my advent calendar with. Here is the advent calendar. So you can see it's the same frame. Um, I did not like the style of the frame and I decided to repurpose them. So here I am with the other one. <laughs> if you don't remember on the signs themselves, it said, I belong to you. And the other one said, you belong to me, which in my opinion was a little too like possessive because I don't know, I just wasn't digging it. So I went ahead and popped in a background piece of cardstock when I was measuring everything and putting it in. It just fit into place. I didn't even glue it. So I was going to tell you the dimensions of everything, but you know, it's in now. So that's that. Then I took this piece and glimmered it. Oh, you guys, how cute are these pine cones? I'll get to that in a second. But I glimmered this with the gold matte glimmer foil from Spellbinders. And I just love the way that that looks. Look at that. Oh, it's just beautiful. And then I'm going to mat this whole piece with some gold mirrored cardstock and then red cardstock like this. Pretend the edges are nice and straight and then put that on right here. So I will do that quickly and then I will pop right back on. I think that it's really fun to repurpose things in my house because it kind of is giving a new life to something, especially something that I wasn't really enjoying looking at and my husband didn't really mind either. He's kind of indifferent to this decoration itself, so I think he's really gonna like what I end up doing with this project, and I think it's gonna go on my piano when our living room is finally put back together. I cannot wait, and I think this Christmas will be extra special because I'm hoping, <laughs> praying, that the project with my craft room and living room will be done by then, we will see. I was kind of hoping for uh, Thanksgiving at the latest, but we'll see where we get to because it's still August and we're still working on it. Anyway, oh, that alone is just so pretty, but we're going to make it even more beautiful. Oh, I put it on too high. Let's see if I can just pop it up really quickly. I forgot I was going to add this bow. I got all excited about Christmas and then here we go. Okay, calm down. 
Okay, I'm going to place this on the bottom because I'm going to have the bow kind of on the top. There we go. If I was feeling precise, I could measure to find the true center, but I'm not that gal. Okay, the bow I'm just going to pop on, and I'm going to see if it needs to be tightened. Yes, it will. Yes, this bow is just beautiful, super silky, and I just thought, why not use this on this project instead of having to make my own bow with ribbon, which... I can do and if you wanted to recreate this you could either check your Christmas stash and see if you have anything that you could repurpose like me or you can grab some ribbon and a roll and check out YouTube I'm sure there are fabulous people who have made videos of how to make a ribbon bow and you can learn from them because I'm not showing you today maybe one day who knows okay Yes, I'm just using this Best Ever craft tape because I'm not really feeling like going downstairs to get the packaging tape. And this ribbon is pretty light, so it's not that serious, you know. And then I'm just going to trim the extras. Oh boy, I have my good Spellbinder shears in my school bag right now because I was using them to cut flashcards. I know, but they're so good. I just could not help using them on my school project. Okay, we're going to give this bow a little bit of fluffing because it's been shoved in the Christmas box for quite some time now. I might need a glue dot. That would be kind of smart, I think. Do I even have glue dots anymore? I don't know. <laughs> we might need to just use glue. I used to have a ton of glue dots and I just kind of stopped using them because they would get so sticky and just they wouldn't go where I wanted them to go and now I want to use a glue dot and I don't have one so we're gonna make our own glue dot I'm gonna let that get tacky for just a minute and then we will put the ribbon on before I put the ribbon on let's just prep this pine cone you guys these pine cones are so adorable look at them I put those four together and then I'm gonna make Number five here, we're going to use Susan's little toolkit to make the pine cone edges pop up. And to do that, we're going to use the foam and the her tool in one with the add ons. Now, to prep the pine cone, I'm just going to pop these on to the foam and I will do the same motion to all of the pieces. I'm going to put the smaller ones up top just so there's a distinction for me when I am putting these together. Now, I am not an expert at all with 3D flowers. I have not been doing them too long, but this is what I do. So if you want to copy that, go, go for it. But basically, I'm just taking this little ball and just making a little circular motion in the center so the edges kind of pop up. This is kind of the same thing that I would do for a flower or anything like that. If you want a more um, precise way of doing this, definitely check out Susan's actual videos. But this is just kind of what I do. So if you're a simple person like me, this video is for you. Now the small ones, I'm just going to do like a little pop in the center and just go from there. Now for assembly, I find it easy to work on acetate or something like a smooth plastic surface. So what I'm going to do is just use the tool pouch that came with this because I can wash off any glue if needed. Now my bow is not wanting to cooperate so at this point I'm wishing that I had some kind of a clamp but I don't. So let's just, what can I use? My aloe vera? <laughs> yes, I love aloe vera by the way. It's just my favorite kind of skincare product. Okay. So to start off, I'm going to put a dot of glue on the package itself and then take one of the pieces like this and just pop it right onto the glue. I found that it's easier to have the actual pine cone that you're assembling glued down 
so it doesn't wiggle all over the place but if you don't want to do that it's fine this glue dries clear and it will pop right off of this plastic with no problem because I'm not going to let it sit there forever in a day just a couple minutes okay <laughs> When I put these pieces on, I'm just kind of rotating them as I go, and it's wanting to stick to my reverse tweezers, so perhaps I need to kind of wipe those off, but it's just kind of a, a calming process of just layering piece after piece, and all of a sudden it looks like a realistic pine cone. I just love that. Now for the small piece, I'm really going to be generous with my glue dots making the dot pretty big because it will dry clear and I just need it to capture this piece. So you're gonna see some white glue, do not be alarmed. <laughs> there is not one perfect pine cone out there anyway, so if mine, if you're making this and it's not perfect don't worry it's perfectly imperfect okay that's enough of pieces on that one so maybe I'll add it to one of these I don't know let's see I'll add the last piece or two to this one just so it has some extra dimension it's looking a little flat on the top I'll kind of show you the difference on this first one I did not do the whole rounding thing with the foam I just kind of squished it and you can see it's kind of an an okay effect but you can see on the ones that I took the time to round it it definitely has a better look in my opinion so I definitely would recommend using the foam and using the toolkit from Susan isn't that little ladybug just adorable okay I'm gonna let this one dry for just a tiny ah for just a tiny bit more Clearly it's not set yet, so we'll just set that off to the side and grab it when I need it. The bow seems to be in place, thank you to my aloe vera. Alrighty, <laughs> let's keep it moving. Anytime I use Copic markers, I like to have something kind of behind it since they are rather juicy, so I'm just going to use a scratch paper that I have here. I will start off with the pine tree, so I'm using E57. G29 and YG67. So first I'm going to start with the browns. So that will be the E57 and I will just kind of gently go over where the kind of stem part of or branch part of the pine tree is. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just on there. And then I'm going to go in with the YG67 next. And this is going to go over everything. Actually, I'm going to use the blunt edge. I noticed when I was using the other side, kind of like that brush style, my brush was kind of getting chopped up a little bit from all of the little pieces of this die. So I just thought I'll use the blunt side because I don't use that as often and I think it can handle a little more wear and tear. You can always replace the nibs with Copic. I have not done that yet actually. I've had a lot of markers and a lot of coloring and I haven't needed to do that quite yet but never say never. Okay, and then lastly, to make a little bit more of dimension and shadows, I'm going to add G29. Again, I'm going to use the blunt edge, and this just kind of went over everything, not too specifically keeping some of that green, some of that other green there, but just kind of darkening things up a little bit. No real rhyme to the reason here. To finish these off, I'm just going to take my fingers and just kind of push the branches in a little bit. You could take the tools from the tool set and do this too, but just for sake of time, I'm just going to round the edges so it looks like the other one. So it looks like the other branches. 
Okay, let's get to the coloring of the chickadee, which is just so fun. I'll use this one as a reference. Now, you might be wondering, well, how'd you get one going one way and the other one going the other way? Well, on this one, I flipped it over. So this is technically the right side, but I wanted two birds on this project, so I used the back side of this, and you couldn't even tell from the front because of the coloring. So, on the chickadee, I used a whole bunch of different colors. So let's just dive right in and get started. So for the beak, I'm going to use C4, which is that cool gray, and just color the beak area. And then I'm gonna take this color and go kind of by the mid neck, mid neck, and just kind of fuzzy color over. And then I'm going to fuzzy color, <laughs> that's not even a technique, but I'm just calling it that, all the way on the wing. And I'm going to continue that on the top part of the tail, like so. If you're coloring along with me, I think that that would be super fun. Okay, then I'm going to take C5, which is just a tad bit darker, and kind of go over where I was there, just to give a little bit of dimension. I'm going to blend that out in just a second here. I'm going to color the feet with this C5 as well, like so. All right, C4 again to blend that area where it matches or it meets the wing, the light in the dark. Okay, ooh, that looks so good. Okay, then I'm going to take C7, which is even darker, and this is going to give the cap for the black capped chickadee. I'm gonna start by just kind of outlining where I want the line to go. So from the beak, I'm going to go up a little and then around the eye like that and then up in the back and then down. So it kind of makes a little M, a little bit of a flattened M. And then I'll co color the whole head with that. like that. Then I will put just a little bit of that on the breast part of the bird. I'm just going to use kind of the pouncing up and down with that. Ooh, this one has definitely a little bit more there, but that's okay. Then I'll take my darkest color, which is N9, and I'm going to go on the top of the head like that and then just a little bit on the top part of the neck. This one didn't get too much of that, but I think it would look nice. Since it is a black capped chickadee, it would make sense if it had some black. Okay, then I'm gonna take my zero, which you can see I use often, and I'm going to kind of create that little fuzzy edge here by just making little circular motions, just so it kind of looks like it's fuzzy like that. I'm going to use that same technique on the belly here in just a second. I'll start with my E43, which is my darker kind of brown cream, and just kind of continue that all the way through the tail, like that. And then I'll take my W1, which is my warm gray, and go right underneath that and just kind of make it kind of fuzzy. And then I'm gonna fuzz it out even more with my zero Copic. Just like this. We'll even fuzz that part out a little too. Oh, this is looking so beautiful. Okay. Now, here is where the bird, here is where the chickadee really comes to life. So I'm going to use this N9 one more time, 
and you can see on the actual eye there is an edge spot there and that's where I'm gonna put this dark color right on the eye like that and then to bring life back into the bird I'm using my jelly roll pen this is the 05 and I'm going to put just a tiny highlight on the top part of the eye and all of a sudden the bird looks like it's alive how exciting and then I'm gonna take this jelly roll pen and make these little swooshes so it looks like the feathers are feathers and continue that through the tail again oh I love this chickadee okay I had a seventh grade science teacher that was all about birds and at the time I thought she was a little bit cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs but now as an adult I totally get it birds are so beautiful and this one is one of my favorite birds we have a lot of black capped chickadees here in Minnesota so I just am really this dye is really just speaking to me for gluing on the hemlock which is this piece I'm just gluing the very bottom part because I want the branches to stick out kind of like that and this bottom piece is going to be kind of nestled in with the on the bottom I have three branches so I'm gonna kind of put them a little higher and get some dimension I think That's kind of the placement I would like for the bottom pieces here, just so it kind of looks like it's one plant and not just three pieces. I am covering up some of the glimmering, but it is a very delicate dye and the glimmer shines through it, so it's just totally fine. There, that kind of creates the illusion that it's one piece-ish. <laughs> there we go. Just gonna fluff the hemlock branches just a teeny bit more and we'll be all set. Oh, that's so cool. I love the way that this is turning out. Okay, next I will put my little chickadees down. I am definitely gonna be using some foam for this because I want them to pop up and be their beautiful birdie selves. So we'll use some foam squares. This, these are left over from this month's card kit, which if you have not checked out, you're gonna want to. It's a good one. I made 15 cards with it this month and four little notebooks. So if you're interested, check that out on my channel. It's called The Fun Life, which is really just fun and sweet it has a lot of things for birthday cards and encouragement cards so if you're interested in that check it out the last day to sign up for the clubs is the 27th and if you haven't checked out the rest of the clubs you're going to want to i have a link in the description for the clubs they are beautiful i think my favorite club this month is the breezy swing i just think that the woman on that is just beautiful and I had a ton of fun making a bridal card with the breezy swing. Okay now for the pine cones. It looks like on an actual hemlock the pine cones are kind of at the end of the branches so I kind of wanted to place them that way so it looks kind of realistic but it looks like my chickadee up here is kind of in the way so we might have to kind of get artistically creative here. I'll put one here on the side and I'm gonna pop my other one that I made with you right next to it. So let's come back to this one. I'm just gonna take my tool in one and use the shovel side and just pop it right off. See, no problem at all. And a little bit of glue here isn't a big deal. It can wash off, it's plastic. I can probably even scrape it off with my hand, but We'll just keep it moving for the video. Now it is a little bit flat, you can see, so I'm just going to kind of pinch it a little bit 
and I think the flattening just happens with the liquid glue since it's very wet but it definitely still has a really cool look to it. Put down a big glue blob again and then stick on my pine cone. If you're going to make this, you're going to want these to dry before you really start moving them around too much or you'll have to just be gentle like I was because they do like to kind of come undone if the glue is not dry. Oh, this is looking so pretty. I, I'm really excited for Christmas this year. I think it's going to be a lovely Christmas. Right now it's pretty warm here. I mean inside right now in my craft room it's 75 degrees so it's not too bad but outside it's been pretty warm the last couple days so I'm hoping for a big storm to come through and kind of cool things down but we will see. It's definitely nothing to complain about. Back at Spellbinders, their headquarters out of Phoenix, Arizona and I've heard that it is like 120 there which I just can't even imagine but I don't know. I've been to Arizona a few times and I've definitely experienced that heat, but I've not had to live in it for years, so I just guess I don't understand it too much, but I just respect anyone who has to deal with that because that is, that is extreme. It's kind of like the extreme winters that we have here in Minnesota. They are no joke, <laughs> and they will get you. Anyway, I just love this finished product. I... I love my finished project. I think that it'll be beautiful to hang on either in my kitchen is where the other place I might put it or on my piano. I suppose we will just have to wait and see. But are you ready for the extra cards? Like I promised I would show you. Here they are. They all feature the chickadee because again, I love the little chickadee. I fell in love with them. <laughs> so here he is. This one, I used the embossing folder that's from Yana's collection. The glimmer plate is from the Glimmer for Christmas. I did a reverse glimmer foil on a scrap of glimmer and ended up with this beautiful diamond. Look how pretty that is. And then the piece on earth came from, I think that was the classic Christmas or glimmered for Christmas. I'm not sure, but I will have everything linked in the description by card or project. This one is all from Susan's collection. We have the beautiful glimmer in the background. This is part of her sentiments and of course the little chickadee. Isn't that really pretty? I just think that these are simple but beautiful Christmas cards with her stuff. This one is similar to, this one's kind of a mix of both of these cards together. I went black and gold because you know I love black and gold <laughs> and then this little chickadee is perched on the sentiment again and it just is a really pretty card. No embellishments on these this time and that is just fine. A little bit different than usual but that's all right. Anyway let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions or rather read them. If you are getting any more of Susan's other dies you're going to want to check out Melanie Smith, my lovely crafty friend. She is fabulous. She is going to be putting out a few different videos this month with this collection and showing you how to make the flowers. She, she used to work with the Heartfelt Creations and she would make these beautiful three-dimensional flowers and she's a very fabulous colorist. I think that's what you say. <laughs> so she's really good with blending and Copic markers. So if you are interested in checking that out, I'll link her channel in the description. She is a great crafter and you're going to want to check her out if you have not yet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you come back tomorrow. I have a little bit of Halloween slash Day of the Dead stuff to show you tomorrow. They're super fun, colorful, and spunky and interactive. So like I said, come on back tomorrow. We'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.